back to another episode of Honestly Bilal. My name is Bilal Med, and I'm a fourth-year medical student at the University of Toledo. This is Honestly Bilal, the show for the aspiring ophthalmologist, where I sit down and talk to medical students who are interested in ophthalmology. I talk to residents who are training in ophthalmology, and sometimes I talk to current ophthalmologists in the field and try to get their wisdom and advice. Today, I'm joined by Ian Seddon. Ian is a medical student at Nova Southeastern University. He went to Rollins College, where he was a rower, uh, and he is also a physics major. And Ian, it's a pleasure to be with you, man. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I've been uh, keeping watch on the podcast every week, so I'm excited to finally be on it. Yeah, from from fan to from fan to guest, so it's good to have that transition. So I'm glad. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining me today. It's it's a pleasure to be with you. It's nice to have some perspective from somebody who's a third year medical student, because obviously I'm a fourth year. So it's nice to kind of talk to you and try to pick your brain about what's going on in your head these days, what you're excited about, what you like to do for fun. So let's get right to it. So let's talk about why you were interested in medicine and what got you interested in ophthalmology, actually. Yeah, so for me, my journey to medicine, I think is kind of unique. When I first went to undergrad at Rollins, I was a physics major. Uh, my dad was a medical physicist. Uh, so for me, my idea of the medical community kind of came from like a physics background. Uh, and I always liked working with my hands, problem solving. And so for me, kind of the logical step was to go into physics. Uh, and so uh, it was my third year uh, and I decided I wanted to study abroad. And so I decided I wanted to go somewhere that I would get a different experience from the every day that I saw and kind of gave me a new opportunity to learn. So I went to South Africa. Uh, and so there I enrolled in a community health program where they had us live with homestay families in the underserved communities in uh, the KwaZulu-Natal region on the Eastern coast, right outside of Durban. Uh, and so there I kind of saw primary care and like medical, the medical community from the physician's perspective. And I kind of saw how the uh, community could be helped uh, on the ground. And so that kind of changed things for me where I decided that when I came back, I really enjoyed physics, but I wanted to do something that was a bit more impactful and something that I could see myself enjoying long-term. Uh, and so that kind of made me pivot towards uh, medicine. That's awesome. So all right, Ian, so also kind of tell everybody why you're interested in ophthalmology and what sparked your interest in ophthalmology and why you, why you are pursuing it. Yeah, so like I said before, you know, I was a physics major. And so I'd always kind of had that engineering background of liking to work with my hands and problem solving. And so I always kind of liked the physicality of surgery. But at the same time, my experience in South Africa had kind of made me fall in love with public health and being able to work with patients one on one and kind of having that longitudinal care you can sometimes see with primary me medicine. So for me, going into medical school, I was trying to keep my options open, stay open-minded. And I knew I wanted something that kind of had that perfect blend of uh, public health while also having the surgical aspect where you can kind of get that immediate feedback. It kind of reminded me of like uh, preparing for sports in a way, you know, the idea of like preparing for a surgery. So as I went through medical school, I was kind of narrowing down my options. And as an undergraduate physics major, I had an optics class where we learned a lot about the eye. And so I'd always kind of had a pretty good appreciation for the eye after learning about all the unique aspects of light refraction and color vision and all those really cool things that are happening all the time that most people don't know about. And so I think it kind of wasn't necessarily one aha moment, mm -hmm. but it was the quiet accumulation of all the things I was looking for in a specialty that all kind of combined. And then the first time I saw a cataract surgery, I was mesmerized by the the micro surgery that was happening and i was like all right i'm hooked you're in you're in so you're locked in now and you're gonna you're gonna go for it man so that, that's pretty sweet i think i, I think it's what you say is, is what uh people who I, I think most people who would agree with is like there there's definitely the mix of surgery and medicine there's the public global health aspect to something i mean it was almost like south africa was a transformative period in your life where it kind of just changed your route and your and maybe your destiny so it's, that's actually really cool i've never been to south africa i would love to go i'm sure it's beautiful yeah it's I mean, it's so beautiful and the country's so big as well. There's a lot of different cultures within South Africa itself. Uh, there's actually 17 uh, nationally accepted languages in South Africa alone. Wow. So. Very cool. Do you know any of the 17 or do, are you sticking with English? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think English is probably my strong suit, but uh, we did, have to, learn, <laughs> we did yeah. have to learn intro Zulu, which was pretty cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think English as a strong suit is never a bad thing to mention. So I can tell you're pretty yeah. That's good. Good to know. <laughs> so I, I know we, 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 you, you mentioned to me that you were a, a rower in college. So 
I got to hear about this. I don't know anything about rowing and I want to hear everything about it. Teach us a little bit about rowing, what the sport's about. I know it's from a, from a average person's point of view, it looks like an upper body sport, but you told me it's actually not. So tell us about rowing and what you learned from it and how you got interested in it. Yeah. So I was a big athlete in high school, but I never actually tried rowing before. Uh, my high school didn't have a rowing team. So uh, going into college, I really had no idea what rowing was. Uh, at the time, I was kind of up in the air determining whether or not I wanted to uh, play college basketball, actually. Oh, wow. uh, and so my friend, who was a, a rower in high school, had been recruited by Rollins to join the rowing team. And so he was like, you know, if you're kind of up in the air trying to figure out if you want to do basketball or rowing, you should give rowing a shot. Uh, so I went out for the team and uh, the coach convinced me. He was like, you know, you've never rowed before, but I think that, you know, the, the nice thing with rowing is that it's a spring sport. So uh, I decided to join the rowing team in August. And so our first race was until March. So I had a good break where I could figure out exactly what was going on with rowing. Uh, so yeah, I joined and rowing is one of those sports where I think, like you said, a lot of people have misconceptions. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of imagine like a really long canoe. And so everyone's just yep. you know, a lot of back, but I don't know if you've seen like a, a rowing machine in like the gym. Uh -huh. Uh, but basically you're sitting on a seat that slides up and down right? and you're sitting backwards because you're putting the oar in the water and using your legs to push and propel yourself backwards. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty cool sport because it activates not only your legs, but your back and your arms as well. So it's a great workout. Obviously, that's why people do it. Um, but yeah, so it's a race. You row 2000 meters. Um, you have like eight or four people in a boat typically have what's called a coxswain, which is basically a miniature coach who sits either in the front or the back of the boat and steers the boat because you're rowing backwards. Mm -hmm. but I don't know if you've seen like a, a rowing YouTube video. I, I recommend you check it out. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the, the coxswain is mic'd up to uh, like a speakers throughout the entire boat mm -hmm. and they'll be motivating and keeping track of like when to row and how fast you're going. But they're very intense. It's something from like the medieval times where they're like, one, two, give me everything yeah. you know it's very hardcore <laughs> that's fun but it's fun that sounds, that sounds like i mean I, eight people in a canoe i'm sure there, there has to be some communication problems at times so and it's good there's somebody in charge who is just solely for the purpose of navigating so if we could mm -hmm. find people like that in everyday life that'd be great too so that's, that's pretty sweet i'm sure it taught you a lot also just like about how to transition to a new like environment because again you said you never did it in high school and you just learned it on the fly so was it like the was the camaraderie helpful were people helpful and like knowing that this is your something you were new at and did they help you along the way kind of pick up the pace and learn how to do it like efficiently do you think that like the team aspect of it kind of helped you kind of learn the sport like at a quicker pace or anything like that i mean i think rowing is probably one of the purest examples of teamwork right because you have to row perfectly in unison or else the boat's not going to move it's like if you had one person try to canoe on one side, you're just going to go in circles. Mm. Uh, so you kind of have to have that unison. So I think for me, a lot of the older rowers who are older than me definitely came alongside and were like, all right, this is how you do it. This is the work you need to put in. Um, so I think that definitely helped, you know, keeping everyone accountable because if not everyone shows up for practice, for example, at the same time, uh, you can't go out on the boat because you're missing everyone's an integral part of the team. Mm. So... I'd say that teamwork is definitely a big thing with rowing. Um, and then, I don't know, I think just for me, it was just so much fun to actually uh, work with other people. You know, we had a lot of international students who actually came oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, from like, we had one of my roommates was actually from France, who was a big <laughs> rower. So it was kind of cool to see the big mixture of uh, personalities. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I played tennis in college in a similar situation to you. Like all my teammates were from France, Spain, Portugal, Brazil, Australia, New Zealand. So that sort of like teamwork and camaraderie and then from having an international perspective is so unique and different. So that's really mm -hmm. cool. I feel like, I feel like I'm sure maybe then you also, as you progressed throughout your career in college, were able to pass it on to others too. Were you able to kind of show other people the ropes as you, as you move forward and in, into rowing? Absolutely. I think that it's funny because even though rowing is like a pretty technical sport, Rollins kind of relied a lot on people walking on just because we have the advantage of being able to row year round because we don't really have the bitter winters that the North, uh, the Northern teams have. Uh, so for me, you know, I was kind of like a semi recruiter uh, okay. where I would always be like, you know, helping the freshmen move in and be like, Hey, you know, you look pretty strong. Yeah, yeah. How about you come out for the team? I bet we can make something out of you. Um, 
but yeah, I, I think it was one of those things where like, if you're in a position where you can help people be successful, you know, you kind of want to pay it forward, especially mm -hmm. like for people who helped me along the way. And honestly, I think that's why I really appreciate your podcast because, you know, especially for me a year behind you, it's really cool to see how you've been able to help other medical students connect with not only each other, but, you know, try to help put our names out there. So it's yeah. been cool. Uh, that's that's the goal and that's it's fun for me too i, I think it's just fun to meet other people and, and to help you know get their name out and, and especially when they have cool stories like you because i mean i don't know anything about rowing and i'm always looking to learn new stuff and what's actually really interesting is that i feel like every time i have a guest i learn a lot more and i feel like i'm at the front seat learning the most so it's actually really cool to be in this position and, and i'm grateful for it also so another cool thing besides rowing that you do is you're a rock climber now and you start picking that up so Talk to us about rock climbing. What you like about that, and how is that different from rowing? What do you learn? What have you learned about rock climbing? That's kind of a, a different skill set cognitively, and, and, and a, a different like sort of uh, athletic point of view. So with rowing, I wouldn't say it's the exact opposite of rowing, but in, in many ways, it's very different, right? You, rock climbing is a very solitary sport. Yep. Um, it's obviously on land. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think for for rock climbing, what appealed to me was that uh, it's something that you can do and it's not only physically demanding but a lot of it is your technique and how you see the wall mm -hmm. it's kind of like a puzzle where you have to you, you can see the wall but you have to know exactly all right i'm gonna put my hand here my foot here and so oftentimes it isn't necessarily your strength that'll make you a better climber but it's the strategy that you take to uh you know overcoming the challenge of the wall mm -hmm. So I kind of got into it uh, actually during medical school because uh, organizing uh, eight guys to go row a boat is just not possible with the medical school schedule. Um, but they have a, a pretty great rock climbing gym right outside of Fort Lauderdale that I've been going to for a while. And actually had the opportunity recently to uh, go and do my first outdoor climbing, which was pretty oh, neat. Sweet. Yeah, we uh, were at a conference in Colorado Springs and they have the Garden of the Gods park there. Uh -huh. And uh, rock climbers typically will go to these uh, rock faces and boulder up and then install these bolts. Mm -hmm. And so they'll put in like two or three bolts and then just, you know, post about it online and say, all right, here's like the map of the route that right. I was able to set up. And so basically me and two other friends from medical school had this picture <laughs> that we printed out from online and we were trying to like match it up to the wall because these bolts are so small. Yeah. It took like 30 minutes to try to find the bolt in the route, but it was really cool once we actually got there. Cause you know, I think indoor gyms, which is kind of what we have to do in Florida mm -hmm. are good for training yourself and to get the proper techniques, but it's nothing like actually climbing a hundred foot rock face. Right. Yeah. I, I think, I think what's really interesting is that there's such a community in rock climbing, which I really know about, but I, I've had friends who do it and it's very much like its own niche and it's like its own little like, uh, like hub. And I've, I've noticed that like setting up these routes and stuff is such a way for people to like talk about it. And I don't know, it's really interesting. I, I've never done outdoor climbing, uh, at least like on, on the actual, like, uh, like, like you talked about like on a route. I, I mean, I've, I've tried to like free climb and stuff. That's totally different. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, the, the in indoor gyms are not like a joke though, because I did it, I did it once and I'm telling you, man, like my forearms the next day were literally sore mm -hmm. in the weirdest muscles I've never felt. It wasn't like my whole body was sore. It was just like really weird, tiny muscles. I don't, I don't know. It's really different. Yeah. It's like a wiry strength. Yeah. So yeah. It's, cool. it's definitely, it's definitely a different type of athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen like Alex Honnold with uh, free solo. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's, it's just cool, man. I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's something I could, I could, I could ever pick up, but now you've got me kind of inspired. So maybe I'll try it out. I don't know. I'm, I'm an outdoorsy guy too. So I like to, I like to try new things. And maybe if, if you encourage me enough, uh, I'll try it out and we'll see. Maybe sometime I'll come down there to Fort Lauderdale. We'll, we'll try it together. Who knows? Absolutely. We'd love to have you. <laughs> That's great, man. So talk to us a little about what you're looking forward to this year. You're about to start your clinical clerkships or have you started already? Uh, so for us, because the COVID cases have been rising in South Florida, our rotations have been delayed, so uh, we're hopefully supposed to start uh, end of August, gotcha. but we'll see. But yeah, I'm, I'm extremely excited. You know, I think second year of medical school is basically one long preparation for board exams. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you take your boards, you're so excited to finally be out in the real world, so to speak, right. and actually see what you've learned, put into practice. So I think that 
you know, I, to be fair, I really enjoyed like this unexpected uh, couple of weeks where I've been able to spend it with family. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of relax, but I'm definitely looking forward to being back in the hospital soon. That's sweet, man. Yeah, I think the I think the first two years are definitely brutal in their own sense. Uh, it's nice to kind of I think kind of have that interaction again, being a real work life environment. I mean, I know you don't you're not like you're not employed, but it's different to kind of get out there and just kind of be socializing again. And it's nice. And hopefully you stay safe down there and stuff like that. But again, family first, always. I'm glad you're spending time with them and enjoying. I'm sure the weather's at least good right now. I know COVID's not good there, but I'm sure the weather's great. Yeah, it can't, it can't go wrong with South Florida weather, you know? I mean, there's the occasional hurricane, but other than that, you know. Yeah, other than that, <laughs> we're, good. we're good. Other than the hurricanes, we'll keep those out of mind, hopefully not of place. But, <laughs> Do and, you have any uh, tips for a third year going into well, rotation? Good question. I think, yeah, I, I think the best thing I can tell you is, number one, always be on time. Be early if possible. I think it's just always good to, if there's one thing that you can always control, it's being on time. So try to do that. Um, and again, I think the most important thing is people you work with, make it a team. I think, I think one thing I, I, I really appreciated and, and kept in mind where the people I was working with the other medical students was you're in it together. You're a team, try to make them look good. Try to help them when, you know, if they forgot something about a patient that you know about, help them out, let them know about it, you know, um, make, make them look good. I think that that goes a long way. And I think that that shows a lot about who you can be and, and people will want to have you around. So, you know, don't be too, don't be, uh, don't, don't, don't be too much in the way. Try to try to be helpful, but not don't, don't get in the way of the residents or anything like that and just uh be yourself and be be cordial and polite and uh talk to patients and be there with them when there's nothing going on try to talk to patients and just uh chat with them and, and talk about life and be, be a friendly face bro thank you for the advice yeah no i'll uh definitely keep you posted to see how it goes these yeah, next I think, couple months I think you're gonna do a great job man i think you have all those down naturally so looking forward to seeing your journey continue ian and uh you're welcome to come back anytime as a third year, as a fourth year, as a resident. And um, I'm really excited to see your journey. And, and, and along the way, if you need anything, I'm happy to be your coxswain and uh, help you navigate the waters. Thanks so much. All right. And well, we'll, 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 we'll keep an eye out for you. Tell everybody where they can find you on Twitter in case they want to follow you and network with you. Yeah. So my Twitter handle is Ian Sedden 407. Great. So yeah, we'll uh, look out for Ian on Twitter. I'll gladly tag him and stuff. If you guys want to see uh, Ian's journeys and if you can follow me at, at, Bilal underscore 1712. Uh, and you can also find me on Instagram at honestly Bilal. And then if you like this content, uh, you know, subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, subscribe on Spotify and uh, like, comment, subscribe and, and share the, spread the word about this. Uh, we want to build a community and get to know other medical students during this crazy time and uh, help them out and, uh, you know, make friends along the way. So Ian, I'm happy to have you as a, as a guest and, and now as a friend and thanks for joining me, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All righty. Take care. Bye.